what's up YouTube uh, back again to make another video it's been about uh, a little over two weeks since my last video uh, I've been through some ups and downs with uh, some my gear um, I got my Wildcat back from the place I bought it from they did some repairs to it uh, they sent it back and it seems to be in pretty good working order since then uh, my power plenum that I purchased from 910 air gun tuning and repairs I'll put a his website right here on the bottom of the screen that's where I got the power plenum from for the Wildcat and um, I believe it fits all models of the Wildcat I got the two and a half inch model and I've already got that installed on there so uh, I'll go over that uh, how I installed it um, I've also also bought a uh, HPA tank high pressure air tank and um, I was going to be using this for my long range videos uh, whenever I go off site uh, out in the middle of nowhere kind of to go shoot uh, 300 yards. That's where I'm at for my next video with the impact. And um, I got this from Air Tanks for Sale or uh, ExpertHPA.com. Uh, That's both the, all the same website. Uh, Joe Broncado is the guy I got it from. Uh, it's a very beautiful tank. I got it in a couple of days ago and we opened the box which was damaged and my fitting on the end of my valve is busted it's literally stripped out of the the valve so uh, i had to file a claim with ups so they can cover the damage joe uh, joe broncado was very kind and even though it wasn't his fault at all he uh, sent me out another valve so whenever i get this settled up i'll settle up with him no uh, with, with ups fit uh, accepts my claim or whatever they got to do to it so uh, I was kind of holding off until I got all the stuff resolved to make the next video, but like I said, I got my Wildcat back in, and um, I was pretty happy with it uh, as far as how it's shooting. I have only shot about one clip through it just to kind of speed tune it. Um, I was wanting to shoot this gun, uh, shoot uh, slugs specifically with this gun, and uh, the way I had it set up before, it was, wasn't consistent, and anytime I tried to go for a high power tune, it wouldn't, wouldn't really stay. So I had it pressurized and I kind of I put blue tape on both the gauges the pressure gauge and the red gauge I kind of put a piece of blue tape right on where the needle was to kind of monitor monitor it over the last few days and it hasn't moved at all so it seems like it's in pretty good shape uh, no issues with my regulator so I did shoot it yesterday um, I just kind of speed tuned it like I said I didn't do no fine tuning with it yet um, I cranked my reg pressure slowly back up to right under 150 bar Actually, it's about right. Yeah, it's about uh, the needle's right on the edge of 150 bar, and uh, I cranked my hammer spring to the max and uh, backed it off about uh, three quarters of a turn. And at that setting, I was getting with the with these pellets here, the the JSB King Heavies. I was getting 970 feet per second, and that's uh, slinging them pretty pretty fast. So I knew I was going to shoot the hybrids faster because the hybrids uh, was only a 26 gram pellet or slug. So uh, I shot those through the chronograph and it was doing pretty good. It was shooting them at 1,035 consistently. And I could probably go up a little bit higher on the regulator, but I think that's gonna give me the speed that I need to get these things to group. So uh, today I kind of wanted to go over how I installed the power plenum and uh, we're gonna do some chronograph shooting so you can see the speed increases. I was shooting 970 feet per second before I installed this power plenum and uh, we'll see where this puts us. So uh, let me get the camera switched over and uh, we'll go over how I installed the power plenum and then we'll go shoot some shots over the chronograph and then we'll do some, and I'll be using the hybrids for this video. Uh, we'll do some chronograph shots and then I'll do some 50 yard groups and some uh, longer distance groups. 96 yards is as far as I can go here, but uh, we'll throw the targets out there and see what kind of grouping I can get out of it. Okay, so as you can tell by the end here and uh, the air on this particular on the mark three sniper the air tube is typically ends about right here and you have some space between the end of your air tube and the end of the barrel so you can see the discoloration here here's where the power plenum is it's two and a half inches long it's pretty simple to install you've got your screw for your stock right under here you got another one right under here take your stock off this piece here you have two of them you have two screws in each back those off you don't need to take them all the way off just loosen them up uh, to where you can kind of feel the screws not having any tension and you literally just grab your air tube and untwist it 
and uh, make sure you depressurize the degas the gun before you do any of that to degas the gun you're going to slide this piece off this is where your fill port is you just literally pull that sucker right off it's just kind of held on there with some o-rings uh you get an 11 millimeter wrench and grab your actual pressure gauge with that wrench and just barely open it up until you hear it start hissing and uh, it'll take you probably about a minute or so to, to completely degas. Um, once it stops making noise the first time, open it up slightly a little bit more just to make sure that it get all of it out. You don't want to unscrew that, that tube while it has any pressure in it. And um, you'll unscrew it, take your whole, your whole air cylinder out, slide it out. It's going to have a cap right there. And it's going to have, you're going to have to have um, like a spanner wrench, two posts to put in there. To twist that thing off what i did was i just got two allen wrenches and a pair of needle nose pliers the allen wrenches fit in each of those holes and uh grabbed the allens with the pliers and twisted it and it popped it off no problems and nothing stripped out or bent nothing um, once i did that once i took that piece off you'll see your regulator tucked inside i just got the power plenum it came with o-rings and extra o-rings which is a nice touch just in case uh, put some silicone oil uh, on your o-rings before you put them back on here and then thread that piece in put your cap right back on there thread that in kind of get it snug you don't have to tighten it with a death grip you just got to make sure it's tight and then uh, put everything back together before you do that um a hint here take calipers or whatever you can to gauge this distance from where the barrel seats to the back of here you want to make sure you document that distance so that when you clamp this back down you have that same distance otherwise it'll throw off your pellet probe alignment and your transfer port and uh could even throw off your caulking arm so just make sure you document that distance and uh, it's pretty easy install so um if you have the compact which this is not this is a sniper i believe it's going to put your air tube with this two and a half inch plenum it's going to put your air tube out farther than what your barrel is and um, you can see here, I've got plenty of room, well, enough room to put any kind of silencer. Another thing that I did, um, I had my Donnie FL Ronin on here before this. And if you can kind of see, see the gap here, you can see the air, the light through here. The length of this barrel kind of droops down and you can see it's actually, it's, it is almost touching right here. You kind of see it is about touching with the Ronin. It sets on there real heavy, and anytime you basically move the rifle around or pick it up, you hear it vibrating around. So because of that weight so much on there, um, I took it off and put the factory moderator or just can back on there. Um, I do plan on ordering uh, another silencer for it. Um, I'm still waiting for Donny FL to make an adapter for the uh, Adam and BP-17. When he does that, I'm going to be ordering another silencer for that gun as well. But uh, I'll probably throw in another moderator in on that order. And um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up going with like a Sumo. Um, I'm going to end up going with a Tonto for the BP-17 and replace the factory one. But I think I'm going to put a Sumo on here. It weighs about half the weight of the Ronin and uh, it's still got pretty good size. But um, even with this uh, factory can on there, it still quiets it down pretty good. So not a big issue if you don't have one. Um, if you followed any of my videos before, I did put a Huma, a Huma two slot transfer port in there. And um, between all that, between that and the power plenum, it uh, really boosted up my speed. When I first took the box out of the gun and tuned it for power, I was barely at uh, 950 with the hybrids. And now I'm, like I said, uh, shooting at about 1,030. Um, I will do just a little bit of tuning on um, as far as fine tuning it. I wanna see what the groups end up at. There's my reg pressure right now. And here's my hammer spring. I actually got it on six. Um, that way I can go up or down uh, and see where it's kind of grouping better. But uh, I'm going to get the chronograph out and uh, shoot a few shots and we'll see where we're at. All right, let's take a few shots over the chronograph and see what speed we're shooting these hybrids at.
right, so that's a pretty consistent speed. We'll uh, clock that as our base speed and uh, we'll start our tuning from there. Um, I might go up or down and we'll see what kind of groups we can get at 50 yards and then hopefully push it out to 100 yards. Okay, so I'm back at the table. I had a slight change of plans. Um, I ran out of the hybrids. I thought I had more left and uh, went inside after I got the chronograph string shot and realized that everything that I have left is varmint knockers. So I have 500 rounds of varmint knockers in the 34 grain. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue the second part of this video with the varmint knockers. Um, the wind has kind of picked up and it looks like it might end up raining here pretty soon. So I'm gonna make this a, a you know, like a two part video, so to say, or even just its own video with the varmint knockers. Um, I was able to get this thing shot, you know, I, I left it on power setting six and that was giving us real consistent speeds. <clears throat> it was 1,018, 1,020, right around there. Um, I didn't even get to do any accuracy testing with it, so it's kind of unfortunate. Like I said, I thought I had some more of these, but uh, killing this box here, this gun has gone through 1,200 of these hybrids and um, I'm still chasing the tune for these. Uh, I hope with this setup that once I get more, if I do buy more, that it'll shoot them. But um, I'm kind of gonna, I'm gonna see how the hybrids, I'm sorry, the varmint knockers end up doing. And uh, I kind of have high hopes for those. I hope they group out of this. Um, I haven't shot those through the chronograph. So we'll just kind of, I'll start working on another video tomorrow and uh, hopefully get that out in the next few days. Uh, it won't be another week before another video comes out. But uh, we can kind of take away from this video. We at least got to show that, uh, you know, what the power plan was about. We did get to document a speed. When I did chronograph it, um, before I started making this video yesterday, uh, the first string that I shot through here, it was shooting at 1,040. So if uh, I crank up that hammer speed, uh, hammer setting to number seven, that would have probably put us right back up there with 1,035, 1,040. But like I said, at the number six with the hammer spring, about three quarters backed out from maxed out and on setting number six that was giving us those speeds so i'm not sure when i'll purchase some more hybrids because they cost a lot and uh if these varmint knockers work out well then that's probably what i'll be shooting so the next video will be about that uh, i have some jsb hades and i also have the jsb mark ii heavies if you guys want to see a tuning video with those uh, let me know in the comments. You know, I know not everybody likes to shoot slugs through these and this gun does shoot pellets great. You know, if it's shooting the hybrids at over a thousand, you know, that's plenty of speed to be shooting either the Hades or the, the 25 Kings, the 25 grains. So if you guys are interested in any of those videos, just let me know. You know, I enjoy making the videos and to tune this rifle is very simple. And uh, in doing so, one of these days, I'll be able to show a tuning video of how to go up and down on the, how to, how to watch your speeds to know when to adjust your hammer spring and when to adjust your regulator and or when to move them both but uh let me know in the comments and uh stay tuned for another video i should have it out in a few more days uh, and if you have any other questions about the tune or uh what i've done to the rifle so far or where i got the parts um you know leave them leave the comments down and i'll get to everybody's questions and answer them the best i can but thanks